I uh, just going over some things. With, I apologize. Uh, Meetings uh, rent one. Yeah, I was saying anything. Any actual reason sure. why you were late, or uh, was that any actual reason why you were late? Yeah, no, we were we were uh, handling a couple things here. Um, you know, we we signed Luther Kirk to our practice squad. Um, released Elliot Fry, released TJ Green, and so we were going through and meetings, and then that obviously that's why I'm late. Well, there's a lot of things, a lot of some things I'll keep in house, and we're very appreciative of the work TJ did. There's some other guys, and it's a very fluid situation as you guys have seen since we've been here, and uh, we've you know moved a lot of guys in and out that helped us on practice squad, and, and we feel pretty good about the health and where we're going. Uh, hopefully, we get Avery Williams back. We should. It's trending in the right direction. And we feel good about everybody else. Uh, as far as Chris Williamson goes, mm -hmm. because he's now out of practice squad elevations, do you now bring him up? Is that all of options are on the table? You know, we'll, we know as the week goes on. Um, but like I said, I mean, we, we feel pretty good about where we're at, the health of our team right now. And so we feel like we'll have options at the end of the week. Uh, what's the extent of uh, Dante's injury? Do you expect it to be a longer term thing or just? We'll see. We'll get the, uh, you know, we can't, he can't come off the uh, IR any earlier in three weeks, like you just said. So we'll see where he's at when, when we get to that mark. Did you see his, his like, presence not being there on Sunday? Well, look, it's the NFL. It's no different than Caleb and McGarry. And that's, that's life in the NFL. But, you know, we, nothing's more important than the, than the health and safety of our players and this team. And But that's why you have a team. and. And like I said, we have a lot of guys. There's a lot of ways to get production. Jason Spriggs stepped up. Uh, we threw a lot of different guys at him outside. Uh, Ade played well. Means, Cope, those guys. And there's a lot of ways to do it. You know, so that's what it is. It's life in the NFL. And I don't sit there and say, hey, he's exactly going to be back there because it's always different. But obviously, where we assessed, I mean, Dante played that whole game in London. And we feel like this is the best thing for him and then for the team. So we'll see where we're at. After New Orleans. One more health question. I know not to belabor the point, but you did get banged up pretty good in the secondary between AJ and Eric. You're saying? Yeah, you get banged up pretty good. Okay. So, like, you asked about the TJ Green move, and, and I really appreciate TJ there, but we'll see as the week goes on. So, I wouldn't use the word banged up. Everybody right now in the National Football League is a little nicked up. It's a, it's a tough sport. Um, and we assess it, and like I said, we take every – Caution necessary, and we take it very serious, but we feel pretty good about where we're at health-wise. That, that's what I was going to ask, is that based off of that, is that AJ and sure, – Sure, you take it all into account. Right. I mean, that's, that's why you really have the meetings. Serious. That's why, you know, when you guys – and, I, and I, I apologize for being a little bit late, but some of the meetings ran long. So, um, but it all takes taken into account, Michael. Yeah. Okay. That's, a, that's, a, that's exactly what you're asking me. I just use different uh, yeah. uh, terminology there, or vocabulary. So uh, – yeah, we, we feel pretty good about where we're at. Is TJ's performance related? Because he's, you know, got up and out, came back. And Look, he, he helped us win that game, and he came up and helped us win that game in New York. And you never know. It's never, like I said, he, he's played a lot of snaps, and I'm very appreciative of him. He could be back. He could be back tomorrow. He could be back in the future. Okay. We'll, we'll see. Uh, as far as you guys go up 27-14, it was early in the fourth or I guess it was 26 14. What made the, went with the decision to kick the extra point versus go for two? Sure. You get in those situations, and at some point, you got to assess it, and that's every game. So uh, we have the analytics, and then you got to ultimately, I got to make the decision. So if you, it's, so it's a law of unintended consequences. I know what the numbers say. We obviously in watching the game, you saw a different thing. At the end of the game, that was however the mask going to be, you know, there. Went for it, didn't get it, and we kicked it, and then we essentially made them go for two, right? So, Harry shook it out. It was probably going to be a two-point game either way, and um, at the end, right? And it's a you know law of unintended consequences. So you got to make a decision. So if you if you go for it, go for two, you don't get it. Now they go up. They got a decision to make to go for two, and it could be a three-point game. So you know we, again, or you you get it. Obviously, I can do the, the simple math when it's twenty-one to fourteen or twenty-eight to fourteen. So. There's a there's a great subjective argument to when you want to start doing that and chasing points. I think you saw it a little bit last night. Uh, they had a, a similar thing happen in Indy, and then there's no 
perfect answer, and that's what makes it fun. We have the information, and we talk about it, communicate it, and then ultimately i got to make the decision, what I feel is best for the team at the time. And so that's what, that's what we felt, and you got to, it depends on your plan, how you're playing, what quarterback, all that goes into effect. And uh, we were in a situation, we had enough time to go down there and set Koo up to kick a field goal. Next step for the defense, uh, you know, putting their foot down. Uh, when it well, you know, it, it all goes together, D. Led, and like I said, if we've that's it's going to come down to you know situational football, and you know, in the red zone, um, you know, we've played well in spurts. That's a, a, an area we'll continue to improve on, and that's it's a lot of games in the NFL defensively. Um, and then really, we got to help them offensively. We you know we were productive at times. Uh, you know, they had the ball nine more minutes than we did. Uh, credit to Miami, but there were some drives. Like, we had some really good drives, and then we had some other drives that were pretty quick. And that can add up. And, that they, you know, the one thing about playing down there that you can really feel on that field, that humidity is real. And so they did credit to Miami. They kept us on the field a lot. And, and that's what I said, it's a tough-minded team. Uh, they got some good players. And, yeah, we need to, you know, we need to get sauce. We can also, as a, it all goes down to the team. Like, we can also help offensively before that so you don't get to those those situations. I was really excited about the, the uh, Hawkins interception. And, Absolutely. Yeah, that, and then the, the, the um, yeah. one. Yeah, and Hawk made it, I mean, look, the thing about the Hawk interception, too, it was, it was a really good job by Dion getting some depth there, mm -hmm. and then Hawk breaks on it. Mm -hmm. And you've seen a lot of DBs take it out. Hawk was smart. He went right down. And so instead of sitting there running it and getting tackled at the two or three, and then and then you're getting and then at the end of the half you're in there trying to get a quarterback sneak to get some breathing rooms. So you don't take a safety. It allowed us on the twenty to take a shot to go get, and we did. And then and, and we got down there and we, you know, you were able to get three points right at the end of the half. You get the ball right back coming out, and that's a ten point swing. Those are it's a great play by Hawk. Great play by him, and it was a, it was a really smart decision by him not to take the ball out. You were pretty candid after the Washington game, or following the Washington game again when you played when y'all played in New York, and um, you said your play calling made a couple of mistakes in terms of managing. Um, well, I need to put words. So you talk about <laughs> what I said about at the end of the Washington game. Correct. Sorry, I phrased the question wrong. After the Giants game, you said you were. You didn't say you said you, know, you said you said you were upset at yourself for some of the decisions you made at the end of the Washington game. You made the Jets game. You said Giants, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you're talking about when I said after the Jets win. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I got you. Sorry about that. No, so, no. It, it, there's a, yeah, um, that's what you're paid to do. You're paid to make decisions. Like I always say, there, there's, no, there's no victims in this thing. It's what you signed up for, and I enjoy it. I feel fortunate as hell to have this job. So, yeah, I mean, I think you, you every Monday, like, whether you win or lose, I, I, I keep saying this, you, you've got to be objective. And there's some things I thought at the time, uh, you know, I know why I did it, but you've got to be critical of yourself. And not in a way that makes you a martyr or you don't you, – it's a fine line to sit there and say, oh, you know, this, that, you know, it's my fault, my fault. And then there's other way you see the other side where you want to blame everybody else in the building, coaches and players, and, and run that bus over. Seeing that too. So I, I call it a really sober-minded approach. So you look there, look at it, what can I do better? If we get in this situation, what would I do different? It just so happened that it came up again and the Jets came over in London. And so just at the time, that's – Pretty similar, and then we just called it different. But ultimately, the players are the ones to make it play, and you got to give them, it makes makes it go. And they did a nice job. What did, you, we've seen kind of kicking had some struggles around the league this year. You know, you were part of a Tennessee team that had issues, I think, a few years ago. Having a guy like Youngway, what does that do to maybe end game strategy for you? Well, like with all your players, like you, you build confidence, and we got a lot of confidence in Young Way, and that's it, not. A, I, I say this all the time. That's not an easy position to break into this league. Most of the times, those guys get cut. Uh, there's a little cottage industry of guys on the West Coast, or there's, a, there's an old teammate of mine, and, and Charlotte's got his own kicking thing. Dan Orr, you know, and you just see it, you know, and it, it's a tough, and you got to be tough-minded. Those are specialty jobs, but you see a career path. A lot of these guys, they bounce around. Um, and then, with some, unfortunately, Youngway's here, and he's a guy that's improved, and we got a lot of confidence in him. And like I said, there, of course, you look up there. I had all the confidence. We're just like I did in New York. He was going to smoke, smoke that thing in there, and he did. But I like that. Laughed at a celebration too.
My <laughs> Secondary debt will bring some rookies from practice class. We already covered that. So okay. Is that live? Is that live? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're good. Oh, good. Well, I was saying, but does that, like you said, I mean, you have a ton of confidence in your way. Does that change sometimes how you think of end of half, end of game? Sure. Versus other, maybe if you didn't have a kicker that you felt like Sure. I mean, that's that's part of the strategy, too. I mean, no different in the, in the Washington strategy, you know, and that's so what happens. But they get down there and you know, if we were able to, on that third down, that, that Heineke rolled out and the guy leaked out late, and they made a play, right? And what you get him tackled there, or you know, he throws it out, you're going to have plenty of time. And then we'll see. Either the game's going to be over, because you know, we'd already missed two extra points. I mean, that, there is some psychology there. And so, hey, like, um, or there would have been more time to go down and say, hey, we, you know, he, he makes it, then we're going to go back down just like we did yesterday, and we'll set Young way up. But we got down there in the field goal range, and we had to throw the Hail Mary. Um, yeah, certainly. How did that block kick look on field? They ended up Miami people were saying that was a huge play. Yeah, it's a big play. Those are big momentum plays. Um, you know, Marlon did a good job. They, he collapsed down on him. Ade comes free, and Ade's got a lot of length. No different than, than Agba knocking the one pass down for Matt. I mean, it's, it's hard to coach size, you know what I mean? Like, it's like having Dikembe Mutombo. Goes up there, you know, you wish he said you had a special drill for his block shots so he can give you one of those, but um, it's like Ade. I mean, Ade, Ade's he's got length. It seems like. <laughs> hey, Dikembe's Atlanta. That's an Atlanta reference. I was going to ask you. That's an Atlanta reference. Oh, no, I know. I was, I was going to ask you where you thought Mutombo could play in the NFL, if anywhere. Hey, could we put him on the uh, field goal and extra point block? So Dikembe, if you if you watch this, uh, we'll, we'll we'll get Terry to work you out here tomorrow. See so if you got you got one good jump in here, so we can get one of those. How can this happen? Uh, the managers running around with brooms whenever. Yeah, I've seen that. Out. I've seen that when when people played uh, JJ Watt. So I've definitely seen that. I think they they showed clips of that. I think New England was doing it. Yeah. And I think one thing I just wanted to ask you about, um, you know, how much your or, you know I know. You, Y'all want to keep improving and mm-hmm. y'all, you know, moving forward and how important that is for, for a young team and the foundation uh, you're trying to build. Uh, film study, but y'all got to be real uh, critical of what, where you're at and, you know, to, to get the team where you want it to be as you move sure. forward. What's that yeah, it's everything. About? Everything goes into it and, and understanding where you're at. Um, like I said, it, it's, it's hard. It's easier said than done, right, and especially in today's climate. Where everything is in your face, you can open that that phone and you can find whatever you're looking for, good, bad, or, or whatever. Um, to try to keep perspective, it's the hardest thing to do. We we preach it all the time uh, to not overreact. Whether things are really good or they're bad, it's that's neither one's really true. Um, especially as you just sit there and focus, kind of that narrow alley and narrow. However, your, your analogy, you want to you got to be objective and just understand. Like, can I look at this thing without too much emotion? Or, you know, you make a good, good play or good, you know, guys get caught up in that stuff or, the, you know, the negative stuff. So that it's a challenge. And the really good ones understand that. And you can stay kind of on that, on that narrow bridge, so to speak. And, and that's a journey. And you, and you want to keep getting better and you want to have a shot at the end. And so what we're trying to do now is to push through. Hopefully we can get, get to a, a winning record. It's a divisional game. Um, like I said, we need to win at home. It's only our third Real home game. I know in London we were in Tottenham, but you know we're almost in November and it's our third one. And but we need to go down there and we need to give our fans a reason to be excited. And it'd be a big weekend around Atlanta. We want to be able to hopefully get a couple of good Braves wins and then we can cap it off Sunday afternoon for them. And, uh, just peek ahead to Carolina. What challenges do they present? You know, I know you're earlier in the press part. Yeah. Of it, no. They, they, they got the quarterback running it out and the, the running backs. I guess the big thing. Well, it's the whole team. Um, they'll be ready to go. They'll be ready to go. They got, they get, they're, they're physical defense. They get, they can put pressure on you on the edge with Burns. We, we know that. Uh, they get good skills, skill guys outside. Like everything in NFL, there's peaks and valleys, and obviously they started the year really hot. And it's a good. It, every game in the NFL is going to be a challenge. It's a good football team, really well coached, and uh, it's going to be a big divisional game here Sunday. Are you, are you a bit, I mean, you mentioned the Braves. Are you a big baseball guy? Did you grew up in a, you grew up really not a baseball Yeah, player. no, I mean, you really grow up in Memphis with not a real, 
allegiance to any pro team, right? And I, you go up there and somebody's got an SEC allegiance. Uh, didn't have one, you know, in my family. My dad went to Yale. My mom went to University of Memphis. So, you know, huge uh, old Memphis State fan, basketball-wise and football-wise. Uh, yeah, so everybody there is either a Cardinals or Braves fan. Uh, obviously, Braves are really good in the early 90s. They were always on TV in the, in the, in the playoffs. So uh, I like it. I enjoy all sports. I, I love it. I think there's always things you can learn from. And uh, it's really cool to watch what they've done. And you talk about, you know, narratives. I mean, I, that's, you know, I remember a couple of years ago, I had a nephew that was uh, graduating from the Naval Academy, and I was up in D.C. And so I went to a Nats game, and they were struggling. I think they were 10 games or so below 500. And they're saying, hey, they need to have a whole wholesale change, you know, trade everybody, build it, you know, tear it down. And then a couple months later, they went in the World Series. Uh, Brave, same thing. They've done a hell of a job. It's just good to watch a team, you know, to – overcome adversity and chip away. It's a long, it's an even longer season in baseball. That mighty, I can't imagine writing 162 stories. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of respect for that. And uh, that was, it's a grind and then they kept chipping away and it's, it's cool to see and it's a, I thought it was cool to see on the TV is how electric the atmosphere was. And that's what winning does. I mean, so we need to get, you know, create our own momentum and uh, create a, a good home field advantage down at Mercedes Benz. Else? Yeah. I know you mentioned AJ and Eric earlier. I'm sorry, I'm asking. How are they doing? AJ, Terrell, and Eric here. I think they're doing pretty good. I mean, we'll know more uh, Wednesday throughout the week, but feel pretty good about, you know, again, I, it's, it's I, like when you ask this question, I know you got to do your job, but we won't have a final answer. You know, we get through Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, but we feel pretty good, but that doesn't mean that something can't come up or things change. That's why I don't want to give you exact timelines because there's, there's just too many variables that can happen. But uh, we feel oh, gear sitting there on Monday, feel pretty good about where they're at, but we'll see. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to ask a really bizarre point because you were talking about Matumbo before. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, 6'10", 6'11", I mean, obviously they're very rare, right? But right. could they, could a guy that big play maybe anything other than like offensive line in football? Or is there, do you think there's kind of like well, the odds are saying that they, they – ha- I would never count somebody out. I mean, sometimes I, I know this, like, uh, the, you know, some of the battles we had with Calais Campbell and uh, when he was in Jacksonville. There are certain times I felt like he was seven foot tall coming at you. Uh, there certain guys that just have a lot of length. Um, as you talked about Watt, and, you know, guys that are really good at knocking the ball down. Uh, I wouldn't – I'll never count anybody out. But, you know, there, historically there hadn't been a ton of guys that tall play. I'm not counting you out to Kimbe. I think he's a big Falcons fan, for what I heard. Yeah. Well, it doesn't make the top 75, but it's not here. Yeah, you're not going to get me in that debate. <laughs> I'm not sitting here trying to uh, run, our, run our own flowery branch, like, uh, you know, first take. I'm putting my side for Rose Ross. <laughs> you'll be here for my two. Oh, there you go. There's a reference. At least you didn't you know, try to get me in the LeBron Jordan debate. That's, that's no, no, he's a good one. I'm not gonna give a take. <laughs> I'm gonna play Switzerland and just hit it right down the fairway. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. All right, thanks, coach.